skies into glorious day Only the splendor of Jesus Who breathes his life into fists of clay Only the splendor of Jesus Who shapes the valleys and brings the rain Only the splendor of Jesus Who makes the desert to live again Only the splendor of Jesus Teach every nation his marvelous ways Each generation shall sing his praise He is wonderful, he is glorious Clothed in righteousness, full of tenderness Come and worship him, he's the prince of life He will cleanse our hearts in his river of fire Who hears the cry of the barren one Only the mercy of Jesus Who breaks the curse of the heart of stone Only the mercy of Jesus Who storms the prison and sets men free only the mercy of Jesus Purchasing souls for eternity Only the mercy of Jesus Teach every nation his marvelous ways Each generation shall sing his praise Wonderful, he is glorious, clothed in righteousness, full of tenderness. Come and worship him, he's the prince of life, he will cleanse our hearts in his river of fire. He is wonderful, he is glorious, clothed in righteousness, full of tenderness. Come and worship him. He's the Prince of Life, He will cleanse our hearts in His river of fire. Welcome to this act of worship arranged by the Chilton Group of the United Reformed Church. I'm Terry Hinks, I'm the convener of the group and I'm speaking from the garden of uh, Corsend United Reformed Church. The group stretches from Slough, the uh, churches there at Trinity and Kingsway, up to Aylesbury, the Fairford Lees ecumenical project there. There are churches at Amersham, Beaconsfield, Holtspur and Burnham, Bourne End and High Wycombe, Chalfont St. Giles, Chesham, Gerard's Cross, Colnbrook and Poyle, not forgetting Wendover. And the churches vary in size and makeup, theology and styles of worship. Some bring together Christians from Anglican or Baptist or Methodist traditions, working us alongside members of the United Reformed Church. We're a varied bunch. But together we are a small part of the whole body of Christ, the church of today. We seek to build up that body of Christ, to strengthen unity among all Christians, to serve our communities, be they large towns or small villages. I'm standing beside the vine in the grounds of Corsent, and the fruit are beginning to ripen. Perhaps we'll have a good harvest this year. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches, those who remain in me, and I in them will bear much fruit. So let us begin in prayer. God of abundant life, draw us closer to one another and to you. Unite us in the love of Christ, 
that we may truly worship you and serve you in our daily lives. Pour out your spirit of grace and truth, joy and peace, that your church may be faithful to your word and fruitful in the work of your kingdom, a kingdom of justice, healing and hope. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the things that we've gained in this period of lockdown is the ability to share with others in worship in new ways. Previously, you might have been familiar with the experience of trying to arrange a joint service or perhaps some kind of local ecumenical event, only to be rather disappointed at a low turnout. The experience, the, the worship time, was often very rewarding, but we felt sorry for those who'd chosen to stay away. In our virtual services over the last few months, we've all found new ways of presenting and taking part in acts of worship. And actually, there's been a real desire to go and visit other places, to see and hear what other people are doing. And I've encouraged our congregation to do that some weeks, to go and see what's out there, and then to come back and share that with our local members so that we could learn and think about what to do in the future. We've had to be creative as well in the ways that we use music. So for this service, I've chosen three songs in a variety of styles from resources that we found useful in our online services. Many organisations have try to help out by providing free access or allowing free streaming of their recordings to help churches through these difficult times. So we start with a relatively modern song which I hope is familiar to you, Here I Am to Worship, you might know it as Light of the World. And then later we're led by the choir of Westminster Abbey, such are the possibilities of digital ministry. In the hymn, Christ is made the sure foundation. The words that you'll see will match that recording. But one of the benefits of singing at home, of course, is we don't all have to use the same words. So if you know a slightly different version, we'll just sing that instead. And our closing hymn will be Crown Him With Many Crowns. That's taken from a set of live recordings that were released by the Evangelical Movement of Wales, taken from their annual conferences. So I hope these resources will allow you to worship as we meet together as the Body of Christ this morning. Step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship, here I am. Oh, 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 oh,
book of Moses say? And how do you interpret that? Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, strength and mind. And love your neighbour. Okay, I'll do this. And you'll inherit eternal life. Here's my neighbour. Hmm. Let me tell you a story. Once there was a man taking a walk in the village when he was suddenly attacked by a group of thieves. They knocked him down, stripped him of his shoes and his valuables, took his phone, his money, everything he had. They beat him up and left him in a really bad way on the footpath. Someone coming the same way came across the attacked walker, but more interested in their own street creed and personal agenda, took a selfie with him and moved on, leaving him lying there. Another person came out for a walk and came across the wounded man, but took one glance and in a rush, getting scared of getting involved, they turned around to go a different way. Finally, a walker comes along and offers his aid. Oh my gosh, are you okay? Here, I've got, I've got my medical kit, I can help. He is happy to stop and get more help, even though he clearly had somewhere else to be. He bandaged his wounds and made sure that he was safe before he moved him anywhere. This kind stranger goes so far out of their way just to make sure that the injured man is taken care of. He takes him to get even more help when he didn't even have to. Can you help us? He's been mugged and he's injured. Oh yes, of course, come in. Wait, I'll give you this. And anything that's not covered, um, when I come back to you, I'll pay the excess. Okay, yeah. Fantastic, thank, thank you. you so much. That's all right, that's all right. Thank come you, on. goodbye. Now, which of these three would you say was the neighbor to the man who was attacked? The one who helped him. Yes, now go and do the same. This story Jesus told, recounted in Luke 10, reminds us that everyone is our neighbour and that a little bit of kindness can put a colossal burst of sunshine into someone's day. Love in action is what Romans 12 verse 9 to 21 is all about. So if you get time this week, give that passage a read. Our challenge to you is to perform a simple act of kindness this week in your family or your community. Here are some suggestions. Make a donation of food or money to the local food bank. Support a charity, bake some cakes for your neighbours, offer to mow the lawn for someone, do some shopping for someone who's isolating, and send a card of encouragement to someone struggling, or give someone a call. You can capture these and share them with your own church family for the next week's service. This is our Bible reading from the Old Testament. Psalm 105. Give thanks to the Lord. Proclaim his greatness. Tell the nations what he has done. Sing praise to the Lord. Tell the wonderful things he has done. Be glad that we belong to him. 
Let all who worship him rejoice. Go to the Lord for help and worship him continually. You descendants of Abraham, his servant, you descendants of Jacob, the man he chose, remember the miracles that God performed and the judgments that he gave. The Lord is our God. His commands are for all the world. He will keep his covenant forever, his promises for a thousand generations. Thanks be to God. We come now to a prayer of confession. God of all life, we thank you for your grace and greatness, the wonders that you have performed. Forgive us when we have turned away from you and fail to seek your help and guidance. Forgive us when we have ignored the wonders of your creation and fail to walk your way of grace and peace. Forgive us when we have lived life in our own strength and forgotten that we and the world itself belong to you. God of all love, for the sake of Jesus, who gave his life for all, forgive what is past, renew us now, and guide us into the future. Be assured that this is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent his Son to be, be the means by which our sins are forgiven. To all who turn to him, Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. He also says, come and follow me. Thanks be to God. Amen.
The reading today is taken from Romans chapter 12, and we'll be reading from verses 9 to 21. We are reading the NIV UK version, and that's Romans chapter 12, verses 9 to 21. Love in action. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal. But keep your spiritual fervour. Serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope. Patient in affliction. Faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of a low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as you are able to, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Let's just pause for a moment to reflect on that reading and to pray. Loving Lord, may we hear the message of that passage in the words I share and the thoughts that come, that it will help us to follow you. Amen. Earlier on, we heard Psalm 105, a great psalm of praise, giving thanks for all God has done and will do for us. The passage from Romans is about what we should do, how to live a life that reflects God's love, how we can show Christian love in our lives today. These words probably sound familiar because bits of them are found in many of Paul's letters and also in Jesus' own teaching. This passage in Romans gives a summary of how to base our living on Christian love. It was written not long after the end of Jesus' earthly ministry when new churches were coming to life. Paul is writing to them to encourage their members and to teach. Roman rule was hard. Many people were very self-indulgent in that time and there was a lack of justice. People who were disabled or ill were left on the outskirts of society. Is it very different today? It is clear that some still feel that they are left out and that all is not fair. Can we help this improve? Early in this chapter, we're told not to be conformed to the world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we may discern what's the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. By God's grace, we can be transformed if we turn to him. We are at the moment living in challenging times and we've had to adjust to our new situation and I think we're beginning to realise that things are not going to go back to exactly where they were. Christians are having to change and think how best to continue to worship and to reach out to others. All change contains an element of risk. 
Are we prepared to take risks? Are we prepared to leave our comfort zones? We want to aim to keep safe and to help others to feel safe and reassure them that it is still possible to worship and to meet. God hasn't disappeared. He is still a clear presence and we need to show this. And so in this summary passage, we have a lot of pointers about living well. Let's have a look at that list and see how they could be adapted for the current situation. Love must be sincere. We really must want to share our love. Hate evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above ourselves. It's important that we do look after ourselves, but we also must be aware of the needs of those around us. Never be lacking in seal, but keep your spiritual fervour, serving the Lord. Are we eager to serve God? Are we keen and excited by the task? Or do we tend to sag a bit? Be joyful in hope. At the moment, it's difficult to see an end in sight and loneliness and depression have become common. But we do know that God will see us through this time and we need to speak out to reassure, reassure people that with God there is always hope. Be patient in affliction. A lot of people are having to be very patient because they're having to wait for medical treatment or for other help. Future plans are on hold or have had to be changed. We do know we can trust in God, but we are probably wondering when that is all going to happen. We need to be patient. And above all, we do need to be faithful in prayer for all these situations. As we share with God's people who are in need, we now can meet physically, but in restricted ways. And that is important that we do continue to meet regularly. Today's technology is great for connecting us and phones and letter writing is still easy. Practice hospitality. This is not so easy. We may need to share in new ways and to be imaginative. We're already having to rethink how we share together in communion. It's an important sacrament and mustn't be neglected. But this, I think, is a subject for another time. Continuing from verse 14, we're reminded that we should bless those who persecute us and overcome evil with good. If you love and help your enemies, you will be pouring hot coals on their heads. This phrase comes from the book of Proverbs, and it's a striking picture it shows that we don't want to harm our enemy, but that we want to stir up their emotions so much that they realise they're doing wrong and that evil will turn to good. Never seek revenge, for it's written, It is mine to revenge, I will repay, says the Lord. Leave your revenge and your anger because it is for the Lord to act, not for us. We are to show empathy, to rejoice with those who are happy and to weep with those who weep. It's often said that a friend's not a true friend 
unless you've shared tears with them. I'm a believer that laughter and tears go hand in hand. I wonder if I asked you to name a story or TV programme that you've read or seen recently that you've really enjoyed. It would probably be something that moved you to tears but also gave you great joy. I wonder if, like me, you watched the interview with Captain Tom Moore, now Sir Tom, and whether you were moved. It's an amazing example of inspired love in action, and it shows that age is no limit with him at nearly a hundred. We are to live in harmony and to be open to mixing with anybody we meet, whether they're like us or not. As far as possible, we're to live in peace with everyone. A great ideal, and few of us would disagree with trying to live this way. In practice, it is not as easy. We like to be comfortable and to mix with those with similar interests. But we do all need to take risks. I was thinking about times in my life when I've had to take risks and do something that's been perhaps slightly uncomfortable. And I thought about when I first stepped into a prison. I really didn't know what to expect or how I would feel. But I actually found it fascinating to be meeting with people from very varied backgrounds. I, as many of you know, I taught in our local prison for over 20 years and I probably learned as much as I taught. In a class of about 15, it could contain 10 or so different nationalities and have members of every faith and none. Taking risks can be challenging, but also very rewarding. And I'm sure a sprinkling of God's love has helped me to share with many of the different people I've met in many different situations during my life and ministry. I am sure you will have stories to share too of unexpected meetings. As we face the challenges ahead, let's remember that we have a responsibility to each other and to our environment. May all who meet or who enter our churches sense that God's love is present and in all the connections that are being made. As Jesus said, if we remain in the true fine, we will bear much fruit. Amen.
And so we come to God with our prayers of intercession. Living God, we give thanks that today we come together from different places and churches and via this video service as one people we unite in prayer and praise. We thank you for one another and for the blessing and encouragement of seeing something of Christ in our sisters and brothers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we bring to you our world, giving thanks for the richness of the earth around us. As September dawns and we enter the church's season of creation, prompt us, we pray, to live as good stewards. Grant us hearts of compassion as we open our eyes to the need of our neighbours, down our street or thousands of miles away, in the developing and the non-developing world. Bless, we pray, Elizabeth, our Queen, our Prime Minister, and the members of Parliament who represent us. At this time of great need and sometimes overwhelming anxiety, grant them wisdom, integrity, insight and compassion in all they do and the decisions that they make. We pray too for scientists searching for a vaccine, those in industry and commerce helping to sustain the economy, and schools rising to the challenge of reopening this week. Touch our world, we pray, with your justice, new life and generosity of spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we give thanks for the churches of our area group and we pray today for their ministers and elders seeking to chart a way forward into the days of autumn. We lift to you congregations in pastoral vacancy as we think of Kingsway and Trinity Slough, Chesham, and the search for a church-related community worker at Trinity High Wycombe and Cause End to serve both in the community and with the Refugee Partnership. We also think of smaller churches, some struggling to see what coming days hold after lockdown. Especially do we join with the Reverend Nigel Douglas and the folk at Holtspur who have asked for our prayers as they consider the future. Help us all, Lord, to live out our faith at work, in the home and alongside our fellow citizens in our everyday lives. Enable us to make that weekly connection between the worship we express on Sundays and how we live midweek, so that something of Christ may flavour every aspect of our life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, loving and gracious God, we seek your blessing on those known to us who are sick, anxious or bereaved. We pray for hospitals in our district, such as Wexham Park and Stoke Mandeville, thanking you for the staff who have worked tirelessly over these last months, offering hope, healing and compassion in this time of struggle and bereavement. And so in a moment of silence, let us lift before God both ourselves and those known to us who need his healing and wholeness. Loving God, receive all our prayers as we offer them in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me as we say together the words of the Lord's Prayer in its modern form. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.